The Walter Q4SF represents Walter's entry into the world of performance concealed carry guns. Have you ever unironically said, if it ain't raining, it ain't training? Do you often get yelled at by your wife for blowing your family's entire back to school clothes budget on the new hotness cry pants? If so, this gun's for you. This gun is guaranteed by Walter to automatically dispense fast coins and turbo pins. It may even be pretty well set up because of the balance to be ready to shred in USPSA or IDPA carry optics division. Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel. I'm David and this is the Walter Q4SF. You've probably heard of one of these but not seen one. Since they were announced they've been somewhat rare on gun store shelves and I'm very happy to have this in front of you to be reviewing right now. It's so rare that I can promise that my YouTube manual reviewer has never seen one. So this is what it looks like on the manufacturer's website and this is what it looks like in my hand. That's right this gun is unmodified so that makes this peak advertiser friendly content. Take all the highest paying ads and send them this way because this content is the Mr. Rogers of advertiser friendly content. Please won't you be my neighbor. I've already talked about this gun a good bit over on my Patreon page. So if you wanted to check out over there, it's a great way to support me and the content I'm doing here on the channel. But jumping right into what this gun is like because it's not on every gun store shelf. They're gonna plunk down the case on the counter at the gun store and you're immediately going to be impressed by just how large and how well laid out the case is. It's not a particularly heavy duty plastic case. It's just like any other gun case, but the foam cutout is very well done. It's gonna come with three 15 round magazines that are very well made. And at that point, you will pick the gun up and you will start messing with it, feeling all the different controls, the trigger, everything like that, and you're quickly going to realize that the five or $600 gun that you default compare every other gun to, like I could buy two and a half guns for this gun, you're gonna realize that this is not the same animal as those guns. The fit and finish is appreciably better than it would be for a five or $600 production run pistol. The steel frame itself is very well set up. Just the small and fine details of the gun and the flexibility that molding something out of steel gives you on how to make the grip, you're gonna appreciate all of it out of the box. All of the controls are gonna be weighted in such a way that it just feels like a precision quality instrument. The slide to frame fit is generally going to be tighter than other production guns, including CZs. What is going to be interesting is while the gun is a brick, it actually balances very, very well because it is a four inch gun and not a five inch gun. So the weight of the gun is closer to kind of the middle of the trigger guard as far as how it balances, which is really nice when you're trying to shoot fast. Since this is a performance uh, concealed carry gun, it does very well in that purpose. So jumping into the ergonomics of the frame and how the gun is set up, uh, the wraparound grip panel that they provide is made out of plastic and unfortunately is somewhat slippery. In fact, it's not a great grip. Good news is the aftermarket segment, we'll talk about how to solve that because there are G10 options that are great. And the grip panel does allow you to tune up the length of pull. So the Hobbit handed among us can get a grip that is gonna work better for them and give them better access to the trigger. You know, I haven't made a joke about left-handed shooters in a while, so you guys just learn how to use scissors properly. You don't need your own special scissors. Just kind of get over it. You guys are always looking for attention. But the left-handed people are going to be happy because the magazine catch is reversible and the slide can be dropped from the right side of the pistol as well as the left side of the pistol. So everybody can manipulate this firearm however they best see fit. The trigger guard is very thin and it provides excellent access to your knuckle up underneath it. It does not rub at all. All. There is a little bit of a heel at the bottom of the grip, which extends the base of the grip down to be flush with the base of the magazine. So while it is a compact grip, it is a compact in the front, but it's slightly longer at the rear. I've decided to name this a mullet grip because it's kind of longer in the back and shorter up front. So if you don't like that nickname for this style of grip, then please let me know in the comments what you think this should be called. But having the grip extend down like that, does provide a little bit more area for your palm to push into the gun. And to that point, the gun sits very well into your palm. A high thumbs grip because of how the slide is shaped, you are in no danger of having your knuckle rub on the slide as it's reciprocating. Slide bite is not going to be a problem with how this gun sits in the web of your hand. So they've done a good job sculpting the grip and it is quite easy to get a very good grip on it and access to the controls, including the mag catch, 
is very well laid out. Jumping over to the ergonomics on the trigger because this is a Walter. Everybody knows Walters generally come with bonkers triggers and this gun is no exception. This gun came weighted with a trigger break right at five pounds on my Lyman Digital Scale, which is very ideal to kind of a performance concealed carry type of gun. And at that price point, you would want a really good trigger because this is a $1,350 pistol street right now in the third quarter of 2021. So yeah, this is a super expensive gun, but I have to say, I think it lives up to the price tag, if not even over delivers a bit, because this gun is significantly nicer than any of the other striker guns that I've tried this far, and at this point, I've tried most of them. The trigger itself does have a trigger blade safety that goes almost all the way flush. It's not like a Glock where it creates an uncomfortable ridge across the face of the trigger. There is a ridge across the trigger, just so you can kind of acknowledge where your finger is on the trigger, so you can pull it straight to the rear. It actually works really well. This gun is very easy to shoot out accurately as a result of that. The pre-travel on the trigger is weighted in such a way that it is very smooth, but it provides tactile feedback until you get to a super firm wall. And then you can just keep building and building and building pressure until eventually there's a very slight amount of yield right before the break. It's not completely crisp like a hammer fired gun would be, but it's, it's almost imperceptible. If you pull the trigger too hard, which is easy to do because it's only five pounds, you won't even notice it. But there is a very, very, very small amount of creep, and I can say off the shelf, this trigger is better than anything else I've tried at this point. And that's going to include everything up until like the 2011 single action only type triggers. One thing that was an interesting choice on the Q4SF is how the sights actually work. Now, some people aren't gonna be big fans of the way that the optics mount on the pistol. It does use kind of the MOS style plate system, although the machining on the plates is much better, but they went with target adjustable rear sight that's all black and a black front which I think is great. Now I'm a big fan of this sight setup because I think that uh, night sights are terrible and I think that just the large, really imprecisely machined sights that don't allow you to get the good equal height, equal light type sight pictures, these sights are as good as something like Dawson Precision would put out. You may not like the thickness of the front sight blade, but the machining is crisp. It is very easy to get a precise sight picture. So it definitely lives up to the hype on the style of sights. And it is an LPA rear sight, which is a premium target sight. One black eye I do have to give the pistol is they don't include any sight plates in the box. You can fill out a form on the website and they will send you your first optics plate free. So that is the optics plate. It has a good male female machining. So it interfaces with the slide very, very well. The plates are a little bit thick, so the optics will sit up a little bit high. They'll be just underneath what the top of the slide would be otherwise with the optics mounted. Can't show you because modified pistol and YouTube and all that great stuff. But if you check out my Instagram feed, you can check out what the gun looks like with optics mounted. The shooting experience with this gun is very, very good. Uh, the gun absolutely is a tack driver. Even with the iron sights, I was stacking rounds at 12 to 15 yards. If I took my time to aim, it would put the bullets exactly where I was aiming. It is a very accurate gun. As far as shooting fast, because the gun has such a great balance and the grip proportions are set up so well, and it gets even better if you're using a good set of G10 grips. The gun just, it, it runs and runs. I have a holster on the way. I'm gonna try and shoot some uh, indoor matches with this gun just to see how it does because I had a lot of fun shooting this gun and I wanna shoot it some more. As far as actually carrying the gun is concerned, this is gonna be a test of your belt. Now I did actually carry this gun in its iron sights configuration waiting on the plate to show up using a TLR1 and a Filster Floodlight holster, which is a universal holster and it'll accept any gun. Now, a compact gun with a full-size weapon light looks crazy and I absolutely hate it, but it actually was okay to carry because it is right at about 40 ounces. It's doable, it's not a bridge quite too far. If you're somebody who carries it like the three to five o'clock position on the, you know, inside the waistband sort of thing, it is gonna create an imbalance. I carried a CZ 75 for years, and that weight is just a lot of weight at three to five o'clock. For some reason, when you go in front of the hip bones with like an appendix style rig, like I carry the Filster, it's not quite as big a deal, but it is a test on your belt of can you get the belt tight enough and will it support the weight of the pistol? Because of the weight of the gun, it actually feels very stable in the holster on the belt. And because it is a compact with that mullet style grip, 
it actually does quite well. It conceals very, very well. And I will say the grip being slippery is a bigger deal, especially if you're gonna do the performance concealed carry sort of thing, because if you're carrying inside the waistband and your garment is over the gun grip, there's gonna be natural perspiration that kind of collects on the grip. And so when you actually go to draw and present to target, you're not gonna get the weld on the gun that you would if you had like a G10 set of grips installed. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call a segue to the aftermarket. As far as the aftermarket is concerned, because it uses PPQ magazines, the magazines are widely available. They're a little bit expensive, but you just bought a $1,350 gun, so you can handle a $45 to $50 magazine. The magazines are super high quality. Walter sells 17 round magazines as well for this style gun if that's more your speed. CNH and others are making uh, aftermarket sight plates for the gun. CNH actually has one that maintains a rear sight, which is pretty cool. So if you're a performance concealed carry guy, that's probably the route you would want to go. As far as outside the waistband holsters are concerned, any of the Q5 holsters will work with the Q4. Inside the waistband, I only found two holster suppliers that are presently making holsters for this. I didn't check all of them. If you know of somebody making holsters for the Q4 sound off in the comments below, but Tier 1 Concealed is making holsters for it and Red Hill Tactical is making holsters for it for inside the waistband use. Since Walter is doing kind of the first party, third party thing, they have a performance trigger. If you decide that the five pound trigger just isn't quite bonkers enough for you, they have a performance trigger for it as well that will drop that weight even further and shorten up the trigger pull. Whether that's a good idea or not, I leave that to you. I will be picking one up just to see what it does to the trigger for, for science. And before we move off the aftermarket, there are people making gas pedals for the takedown lever. So if you need me to make fun of you on the internet, you can put a gas pedal on your production gun and I will get right on that. But ultimately, you've heard a lot of people say it and I'm not gonna be the first, I promise, but we are living in a golden age of guns. And this is a gun guy's carry gun. And what I mean by that is, there is the basic level for any carry gun, which is can you afford it and is it reliable? Well, this day and age, almost everything is reliable, although you're not excused from testing your specific gun with the specific ammo that you want to carry. You absolutely have to do that regardless of manufacturer. But once you get past that, if guns are kind of like your hobby and your passion, you kind of want something that is something you could brag about, something you take pride in. And that's where I think the Q4 really over delivers. It is just a precision gun. It is put together so well. Like you put this next to like a Staccato C2 or something like that. And the Q4 doesn't really leave anything on the bone. It feels in the same echelon as a Staccato despite costing about a thousand dollars less. So earlier when I teased that the gun might actually be worth it and over deliver, that's what I'm talking about. Like you would have to get up into the multi-thousand dollar semi-custom gun realm before the quality is going to run away from what you get with the Q4 SF. This is a gun that was sent to me by Walter for t &E so I could do some videos for you guys. So yeah, like I'm saying, I am a gun guy and this is a gun guy's carry gun. Now I'm not saying that I'm going to make this my carry gun, but I absolutely love shooting the gun. It is a bullet hose and it is super well made. It is something that I would take pride on looking at in my shelf and taking out to shoot from time to time. And I'm not somebody who just grabs gun and, and shoots them for fun time to time, typically. Like I have my competition gun and I have my carry gun. And those are the guns I shoot most of the time if I'm not reviewing a gun for the channel. But I like this gun so much, I probably would take it out from time to time just to have range days with it because it is awesome. So I am gonna set it up for uh, carry optics and try some indoor matches with it just to see how it contends because I think the gun's amazing. Amazing. So sound off in the comments, 1350 for a pistol. Would you consider carrying that? Is that too expensive and too nice for you and you want something cheaper? Do you really want maximum performance where you'd put up with the weight? Let me know your reasoning in the comments and we can have a conversation. Now, if you've made it this far, I've made this video comparing the Q4SF to the SIG P320 AXG Scorpion. And here's a short about the lock grips that you can get for the pistol. I appreciate you guys and I'll catch you on the next one.